Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the Irish Abroad Show. It's myself, Paul Tierney, and I'm joined by Jer Brown. Jer, how are we after last week's festivities? I'm all good, Paul. It's amazing how just a massive contrast. Last week we just couldn't talk about enough football. But this week, the effects of an international break and what it can do to you, because when you go so long without football, then when it's the first day in a while it comes where you have a bit of decent football, you actually forget there's football. I completely forgot until about an hour ago that the World Cup uh, playoffs semi-finals are on tonight. Obviously, we are not there. A couple of tasty games. Obviously, I think Scotland and Ukraine probably would have been the game that we would have been most interested in because there were two sides in their Nations League campaign. That's obviously been postponed. But uh, which one of the other games that is going to hit tonight um, are you most likely to tune into when you get back from football tonight? Uh, probably Wales to be honest with you uh, like you look at Italy and Portugal's matches they're probably both going to come through them Portugal and Turkey is a, it, it is a bit tasty and maybe there might be an upset there but after the Turkey we saw in the summer or last summer I mean I, I wouldn't expect much from them Um, yeah probably Wales and Austria just simply because Wales are neighbours and we, we play Austria a lot and Sky will be pushing it big time anyway so that will be the one more than likely for me Um. Yeah, that's grand sure. I think they're South American and all on, on tonight as well. And I think Japan and Saudi Arabia, interestingly, qualified this afternoon. So there's two more teams to add, two more teams who are generally there anyway. So yeah. we can look forward to seeing them in November, which sounds extremely weird to be saying that we're watching it in November. Uh, anyway, we'll crack on anyway, and we'll start off with the uh, with the Premier League. Uh, Matt, the only bit of information we got, there was not wasn't that many matches this weekend. Was uh, in Spurs three one win over West Ham on Sunday. Matt Darty got the full ninety minutes. Another another full match under his belt, Jaren. That's good to see. Yeah, and overall fairly kind of strong reviews. Uh, Spursweb.com gave him a seven out of ten rating. Um, a bit weird when you're going to hear what they have to say about him considering when you, they gave him a seven out of ten rating, saying not Darty's finest game in attack or defence. You can see the free corner that Spurs gave the goal away from, and it didn't quite happen in the final third. Not awful by a long shot. So, like, you're reading that and you're kind of thinking, like, well, he's probably going to be down to four or five. And then when you see it's a seven out of ten, you're a bit disappointed and have more positive things to say about him. But uh, Hot Spur HQ, they also gave him a seven out of ten rating, saying overall reliable effort from Matt Doherty, who finished the game on the left. Doherty's most significant contribution was on the opening goal when he created the turnover in the West Ham half, which led to the first goal. Matt had some solid defensive moments like fighting Antonio at, at the back post early on, or a poor touch that supporter where the hammer scored. So a lot more positive um, feeling there towards Doherty from the latter report there. And yeah, and finally, I think as we were kind of been crying out for from the start of the season, he's getting that consistent run of things as you would expect in his first team, given that we've been quite publicly clear we're not fans of Emerson Royale. And I'm not just saying this to kind of spite you up, but I, I have a sneaky feeling I think Spurs... They're going to get fourth. I know that might sound strange. It's not that long ago I was saying I'm not convinced by under Antonio Conte. And we can still see the inconsistency. But I think when they are good, you can see what they could potentially build under Conte. It's not always a given with Daniel Levy and how he can be very much like to keep his hands in his pockets too much. But if Conte is allowed the funds and allowed to sign the pairs he wants and do the makeover that squad in the summer, I think we're looking at a stronger Spurs next season and possibly backed by a top four finish as well. Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll go along with you there, Jeremy. I mean, I was saying it once Conte came in. He's Once he gets teams going, they're flying. Yeah. It generally only is for about a year, year and a half, because he usually has a falling out with someone in the club, usually someone who owns the club or the chairman or something like that. But uh, look, I mean, listen, they've got Harry Kane. He's one of the best strikers, if not the best striker in the world on form. Uh, he started to get a couple of goals. Son's just behind him. I mean, Son got Son got the two goals the other day and the other one was a deflection, so he could have easily had a hat-trick too. When those two boys are firing, they're one of the best in the league. But uh, listen, it'll be part, important to get top four, but the damning truth about Spurs is that they haven't won a trophy in a long, long time. And as good as they can be, and I even saw tweets about Poch- them being the best team in the league under Pochettino when he was there. Listen, no. they might have been, but they didn't win anything. And, and I, yeah. honestly, I don't think they were... Leicester had their year. They were definitely the best team by a country mile that year. That's why they won the league. Uh, Chelsea have had some cracking teams in the last few years as well. Uh, Liverpool ran away with it that year. City ran away with it one year as well. So, I mean, I don't I don't think Spurs have really been the best team because the best team usually wins the league or 
like win something else. So I don't know. But look, listen, I think with Conte, they have every chance of winning something if he stays around. And look, I think their best place to get top four. Obviously, that game between uh, Arsenal and Spurs is huge. Arsenal probably have a tougher run in, really, because they have to play basically everyone in and around them besides uh, Liverpool and City. So, look, it's going to be tough, but uh, look, it'll be interesting anyway. And that's the way we want it, really. If it's interesting at the end of the season, that's the way you want it. Um, that's it for the Premier League. Anyway, We can I, I can run through the FA Cup as well if you want, and then you can go through the Championship, or do you want yeah, to do sounds... the FA Cup? Yeah, no, I'll let you, because it's really... FA Cup Premier League kind of all tied into one because of the lack of games anyway. So yeah, I can do the championship then afterwards. Grant, Grant. Anyway, we'll start off with Saturday evening. The first match was between Middlesbrough and Chelsea. Obviously, Ireland playing at the same time. So a lot of people might have missed out. Aaron Connolly Ireland, got... Ireland were playing in, in what? In rugby. What did I say? That's, that's, that's not a sport. Oh, sorry. Apologies, apologies. We won't... Uh... We won't discuss that. Uh, heard they were piping in, chanting, uh, yeah, chanting and fan noise. That won't be happening on Saturday anyway, I don't think. But uh, anyway, Aaron Connolly got 58 minutes in Middlesbrough's 2 0 defeat to Chelsea. Uh, Jermaine Genus was actually on his back a lot in the commentary there, but I thought Balogun was a lot worse than Connolly was anyway, that's for sure. Um, Seamus Coleman got 73 minutes in a pretty bad 4 0 defeat to Crystal Palace, where Everton actually started quite well and were the better team for. 15, 20 minutes until Andros Townsend's awful injury anyway from what it looked like. And uh, also on Sunday, Shane Long got 63 minutes and Will Smallmoan got two minutes plus at a time in Southampton's 4-1 defeat to Man City. So not good reading for the Irish lads in the FA Cup this weekend. No, I think all four results probably went as according to plan. Um, Unless Crystal Palace, who can pull off what would be classed as, a, as an upset against Chelsea in the semi-final, were probably made up for a very high-quality FA Cup final. It's not too often we can say that, that like two of the three of the best teams in the league are going to contest both domestic cup finals this year. Obviously, unless Crystal Palace pull off that win. So, I suppose it's good to kind of unite competition in, um, in that final. Obviously, Liverpool and Man City now face the semi-final a week after their grudge league match as well. You know, there's possibility of if you consider meeting the Champions League final, you could have Man City and Chelsea. Of course, meeting the Champions League final could mean an FA Cup final a couple of weeks there. And then you could have Liverpool and Chelsea. They might continue off from where they were and have the real League Cup final replay um, in May. Like So, yeah, so it's set up for a very, very good end to the, um, to the FA Cup. Obviously, look, we like to see our fairy tale stories and everything else like that. And Crystal Palace will point that they're in a, in a strong position going into that Cup semi-final. Look, they won't fear Chelsea by any stretch of the um, imagination. They're in a solid position in the league. They can focus everything they want in that game. Like, but uh, yeah, disappointing that there'll be no more Irish involvement left in the in the competition. There, I think it was like I said, you know, all them three sides were, were underdogs. We thought maybe Everton might have been galvanised by the win against Newcastle on Thursday night, but uh, it's kind of like any good that was done for that in terms of reputation and morale has just literally been wiped out with a hammering defeat like that. And they've got a couple of massive games now coming up in the next couple of weeks. They've got West Ham just after international break, and then they've got. Boy, there's a grudge match as well for them against Burnley in a rearranged game. And then, if memory serves me correct, it's Manchester United. So, it's a, it's a tricky one. Three games like that coming back after international break. And like I said, that game against Burnley sandwich in between is, is probably the most significant. Yeah, definitely. And the, the game that you can actually see them taking points from is probably Man United at home because they usually do, to be fair. And they usually put in a performance against United at home. I just I was talking to, uh, to a United fan about it and he said, I actually don't fear playing against Arsenal. I fear playing against Everton because they usually do take points off them at Goodison and same with Arsenal as well. I called it this season too. So like it's, I think it's just one of them things, but uh, still in trouble. Got a good win, a uh, good win against Newcastle during last uh, on Paddy's day. So uh, I mean, they're, they're still in trouble and uh, look, they were good for 15, 20 minutes on Sunday and then just the way Palace just scored their first chance, basically, from the header from Gay. And, I mean, <laughs> look, it's just they just capitulated then Everton, which they seem to do a lot. And as yeah. Carragher was saying, a championship standard defence beside Seamus Coleman. But, um, yeah, that, that's it for the FA Cup anyway. Disappointing for the lads. But, uh, I mean, the four best teams who were in the quarterfinals have probably gone through, like you said. Um, do you want to run through the championship then? And uh, we can... Maybe at the end of it, briefly talk about uh, Festi Ebesele's fantastic move to Udinese as well. 
Yeah, because there's a couple of championship news as well. We talked with Jimmy Dunn also getting caught up to the Ireland squad. But um, yeah, I'll give you a rundown. A little bit of a shorter championship uh, schedule of the weekend due to the FA Cup as well. There were a couple of championship sides involved in that, so there wasn't a full house of games. Uh, Conor Horahan got an assist as Sheffield United by fellow Yorkshire rivals Barnsley tuning in at home. That's his fourth of the season. John Egan also started that game for Sheffield United, of course. In the Stevens. Remains a long-term injury there, and Dave McGoldrick, likewise, as well, also sidelined for the rest of the season there. Uh, speaking of Feste, Ebiseli himself and Aaron Cashin started for Derby, where Jordan Shipley started for commentary, as their respective sides drew 1-1 uh, on Saturday, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. With Reading's win against Blackburn, it looks like the ghost is just starting to get away from Derby a little bit. They face a huge uphill task now when the league resumes after this March international break. Uh, Cyrus Christie and Michael Obafemi. Uh, for Swansea City and Scott Hogan for Birmingham City all started as their sides played out a stalemate. Ryan Manning, of course, still suspended for Swansea. He's hoping to be getting the game time in this upcoming international break with Ireland. Uh, Dan McNamara was on the Millwall side that lost 2-0 at home to Stoke. So a crushing blow for the Lions' hopes. I think that's their nickname. Um, they were lying on the crest down there. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of making the playoffs. One man who won't be involved in the international break now over the next couple of weeks, Daryl Lennon, but he was captain of Blackburn, as I mentioned. They suffered that 1-0 defeat um, away to Reading. Obviously, I mentioned the significance of that at the bottom end of the table. Blackburn were aside a couple of weeks ago. We thought we were going to push hard from automatic promotion. Now they look like they're just literally doing all they can to kind of crawl into the playoffs. As I mentioned, Daryl Lennon won't be involved in the upcoming friendly internationals due to, I think, growing complaints. Uh, Sean McLaughlin, and Hull City had a day to forget as the Tigers shifted three goals as they lost 3-1 at home to Luton Town, who have been very much a surprise package this season. And looking, they're currently in the playoffs, aren't they, Luton? Yeah, they're third. They're third. They're yeah. not too far off Bournemouth. Now, Bournemouth did, uh, did get a result on the weekend. But, uh, I mean, the form Luton are in, it'd be madness if they did come up. But fair play to them. Fair play to them. They keep going. They keep going. And even since they've come up from the championship, they've done better year on year, which is great to see and fair play to them. Yeah, and you mentioned Bournemouth. That brings us on nicely to him because Mark Travers kept a clean sheet as they got the better of Huddersfield 3 nil away in that massive relegation six points. Of course, Huddersfield were the side that were third. That gives Bournemouth a bit of breathing space now and they've got games in hand. But unfortunately for Mark Travers, who's having a very good season a year on from maybe a disappointing uh, night in Belgrade he won't be involved either now in the upcoming uh, friendly squads he's pulled out of the spot as well I think also for injury reasons of course and we also know Gavin Mazzuni is out now as well through sickness uh, Callum Robinson was a sole Irish representative for West Brom as they shared the spoilers 2-2 with Bristol City so they have been on a little bit of a mini revival West Brom that kind of stalls a little bit they really need to start getting more wins and draws if they are to get crash into the playoffs Sammy Smollocks and Jack Taylor both started for Peterborough as they recorded a massive surprise win uh, 3-1 away to QPR I don't think many people seen that coming you know we talk about Derby having worked to do Peterborough like her you know probably three or four times that they look destined for League 1 football but they keep pulling off results like that you never know QPR big blow for them they've blown hot and cold the last couple of weeks in their quest to make the playoffs and they had an interesting debutante in goals uh, Kieran West was only just fresh from signing area that week as a free transfer he started that game in goals Jimmy Dunn who's now also going to be in the Ireland squad taking Darrell Lennon's place started that game but Jeff Hendrick was introduced off the bench. So that's all from the championship there. So I mentioned a lot there because you had the likes of Daryl Lenehan and Mark Travers has put out of Ireland squads. Jimmy Dunn has now come in in uh, one of them places. And of course, uh, Fessy Abacelli is probably been grabbing the main headlines because he's now going to be playing his trading initially next season with Udinese and of course joining fellow uh, Pats youngster James Abanqua in going there. Yeah, definitely. Fantastic move for him. Uh, I know Serie A has maybe dropped off in quality the last few years, but Italy are the European champions. And I mean, that's got to be said. It's a it's a very well viewed league, particularly over here and in England as well. And uh, look, he deserves it. He's been brilliant for Derby all season. The Derby fans have sung, have, have their own chance about him. They love him. They think he's been fantastic. And he has been fantastic whenever I've seen him as well. Um, it's going to be tough though I mean you're going to have to adjust you look at Udinese they're a very very good club at producing players and bringing them through you think of Alexi Sanchez that's where he came through after coming from River Plate uh, several others as well I can't think of them off the top of my head Handanovic the goalkeeper he's at Inter Milan now Benatia centre half I mean there's tons of players there and they're all from different countries as well so I mean he's going to have a massive opportunity there and I think they're 
they're well linked with Watford and Granada as well. So That's if right, it doesn't yeah. work, if it doesn't work out at Udinese, there's always a loan move to one of those, and they're two clubs who are well. Granada are in the first in the top tier in Spain, and we're in Europe last year and done very well. And then you have Watford who are up and down from the Premier League and putting in a real good fight to stay in it this year as well. But uh, look, hopefully it goes well over in Udinese. And uh, look, he's playing with some very, very decent players there as well. You think of Jared De La Feu, uh, maybe he didn't have the career we thought he was going to have when he first went to Everton. But uh, look, still a, still a top player on his day. And Roberto Pereira, same. He was at Watford too. So there's talented players there and it'll only be good for him. Yeah, certainly, and it'll be interesting to kind of see how he, how he gets on. I think we will be a little bit more realistic in the sense I think he's most likely to see more first-team action than someone like James Banco. I think it doesn't turn 18 into this year, still currently in school, Sydney's even start this summer, massive step up from League of Ireland. So I think he'll kind of be a gradual progression, but it will be interesting to see how fast he gets on next season. I think it's going to be a big step up. I think it's one of those, it could, take, as you said, take him a while. It might maybe be the second half of the season before he might kind of get into it. But look, encouraging kind of signs of scene and even though he's not involved in senior squad in this campaign they can't be far away and I do think if he can continue his form between now and then the season that um, an Ireland senior cap could be coming his way in June and hopefully he can sign off his time with Derby and Hyde and they can pull off that great escape and stay up um, I'm just going to go through League 1 if that's okay because I don't have anything for League 2 um, so yeah. I can let you take that then if you want yeah, of course, no problem. That's fine. I have yeah. a fair bit from League Two anyway. So, uh, that's so all yeah, good. nice, nice bit from League One from last weekend. So Will Keane scored his 20th goal of the season in all competitions. His 19th league goal as Wigan Trash Morkham five one. The Lashes remain second, and they are three points ahead of NK Dons, two games to hand. So they're looking pretty good for all my promotion in general. They've been fairly consistent this season. There hasn't been too many off days for uh, Wigan. Uh, another good day for Gavin Bazuni as he kept a clean sheet in Ports with nil nil draw with Wickham. But as a touch on, he won't be involved in the Ireland squad. Well, won't be involved in these games for Ireland. He's pulled out through illness. Uh, Luke McNally, he's having an unbelievable debut season in England. I think it's fair to say. He got his fourth goal, which is really impressive for a centre-back. And considering it's taken him a while to consistently break into this Oxford team, anyway, his, this time around, he got an injury time equaliser as they drew 1-1 with Ipswich and they remain in the playoff basis. So Oxford, I think, was it the covid uh, League One playoff final, they lost out that time to Wickham, so they have been knocking on the door. And this could be the year that they could get back up to the second tier of English football. And Warren O'Hara, another goal scoring centre back, uh, he was the hero for NK Dongs as they bet Cambridge 1 uh, 0. And as I mentioned, that very much keeping the pressure still on Rotherham and Wigan in the promotion uh, race. That's his second goal of the season. So, um, a couple to get through there from League One. Obviously, disappointing, you no know, Gavin Bazunu for the Iron Squad, but golden opportunity for Peeping Kelleher. You know, as I mentioned, Luke McNally, he's really done really, really well in his first season in uh, in England. He probably couldn't have asked for much more. And I suppose the big question is, Will Keane, he's been in form all season. I think he came on, made his debut towards the end of the Portugal match. Big question is now, are we going to see a, a proper stint from him across one of these two matches over the next week? Uh, definitely. I think he deserves it, to be honest. He scored a lot of goals at... Uh... I mean, League One, it's a decent level as well. I mean, it's not far off the championship, particularly the teams at the top. They definitely put in a, put in a shift against a lot of the championship sides, if you think about it. He's got 18 goals. Or, uh, that's his 19th now, I think, is, or is it his 18th? 19th in the league, 20th in total. 20th in total. That's great going, you know I mean? Yeah. In any division, that's great going. And uh, I think he deserves it. Probably be Lithuania, maybe more so than Belgium. Not, I know they're both friendlies, but... Just with the Belgium game and probably the bigger crowd, I'd say Stephen Kenny might go with a more team, a, a team we see more frequently, more so. But uh, yeah, definitely, I think he deserves an opportunity and uh, fair play to him from getting the goals. You mentioned Luke McNally, fantastic stuff. The centre half gets more than two goals, they're having a crack in season. And if they keep tons of clean sheets as well, fair play to them on that too. And uh, Oxford, as you've said, they've been knocking on the door for God knows how long now. How they might finally get over the hurdle now in the next few weeks and in the playoffs as well. And uh, look, Warren O'Hara, MK Dons have been fantastic all season. You've got to say, and there's loads of Irish involvement there too. Uh, I actually saw an interview with Troy Parrott the other day saying he didn't, when he was 16, 17, he didn't expect it to be as tough as it was going down to these divisions. Well, listen, it'll only do him do him good and I think it's better that he's playing than sitting on the bench for Spurs so yeah, yeah. definitely and uh, look it's great to see in League 1 as well loads of involvement as well and loads of teams still fighting for promotion and playoff spots there too yeah I actually think 
we will see Will Keane in the Belgium match. Like I think if he's coming on against Portugal, then that was a high stake match in the sense it's competitive. Like there's unlimited amount of subs in international friendlies, and, and there will be an element I think that Ireland will want to go all out to get a result here and kind of test themselves. Uh, albeit it will be a little bit of a weak in Belgian team because they've left some big hitters at home. I, I do think if it's, I know it's not quite the same because it's a friendly game, but if it's in the melting pot or it's, you know, there to be got at, like I, I can see him kind of been thrown on. Now, I don't think Stephen Kenny's going to make drastic changes, but I do think that's one area where he could look and say, look, throw him in a little bit more in the deep end and see what happens. And we're talking there about Oxford as well and how well it's going for Luke McNally. Of course, we should also mention there's a good possibility whether his teammate Mark Sykes will probably have his first Ireland cap as well. Uh, by the time we talk next week, like so, uh, yeah, plenty of um, positivity and encouragement there, as always, coming from League One. Uh, if you want to give us a rundown then from League Two to finish up yeah. in England, Grant. So I, I have a mix of the weekend and midweek. Anyway, I didn't get all the midweek, but I definitely got one anyway. So we start on Friday night. Uh, Neil Byrne scored the winner for Hartlepool in their 3-2 win against Newport County. It was a late goal as well, so massive win and a massive journey down for Hartlepool as well. So they'd be delighted with that one. Uh, Leo Connor got an assist in Sutton United's one-one draw uh, in Tranmere Rovers one-one draw away at Sutton United. So good to see Lee still doing well there for Tranmere and they're up the top of the table as well. And Callum Cavanagh scored a late equaliser to cancel out Connor Wilkinson's penalty in Harrogate one Walsall one. So that's Connor C- Callum Cavanagh's first professional goal, and it was a 94th minute equaliser. So that's exactly what you want for your first professional goal. And fair play to him. I think he's Graham Cavanagh's son, isn't he? He is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that that's fantastic for him and fair play to him when that actually done me out of uh well it was my team who I picked in the bet that week. I wasn't we weren't gonna win, but it's always nice when your team wins so you can blame someone else. So uh I went for a Walsall and look, fair play to Callum. The more important thing is that he got the goal rather than me winning a couple of quid. But uh yeah, fair play to him on that. And one bit from midweek as well, and this involves Harrogate as well. They were beaten three 0 by Leighton Orient and Aaron Drinnan, a name who we haven't heard for heard in a couple of months, he got a double. As late in Orient won 3 0. They just brought in a new manager as well down there. I mean, they started the season very well, but they collapsed right down to near the relegation zone. So that that's good for Aaron and good to see him grabbing a couple of goals as well, get the confidence back up. Yeah, he seems to kind of go in, in spits and, and, and spurts um, as Aaron. Like it's, I think it's probably since before Christmas we could have last mentioned, but there was a while there where we were mentioned for three or four weeks in a row. Then you go dry and then you mention back again. Like So hopefully it could be something that might kind of kickstart. And get his kind of season going. Just looking at the table here, the like Leighton Orient look like they're going to be fairly okay. They're on 43 mm-hmm. points. Oldham on 31 in 23rd position. That's 13 points with eight, nine games to go. I think they'll be okay. They're in decent form. They're unbeaten their last five. They've won two in the bounce side. So I think they're, they seem to be hitting form just at the right time and might push for a top half finish. And who knows, you know, a couple more goals, as I mentioned there for Aaron as well. Um, I'll move on then into Scotland. Uh, so. Another man we'll be looking to see get his first senior cap as well over the next couple of days, Conor Ronan. He got an assist in St. Mirren's 2-1 defeat against Dundee United. Charlie Dunn, Alan Power and Joe Shocknessy also all started this game for St. Mirren where Conor McCarthy came off the bench. Uh, another man who also got an assist in his defeat for his side was Joe Carroll. Um, Joe Carroll, as uh, Motherwell lost 2-1 uh, away to St. Johnson. Dan Cleary starts this game for the winning side. Uh, fresh from his major impact off the bench in the Cup uh, Aaron McInniff this time was given a start in the league as Hearts bet Livingston 2 at home just to touch on it there Hearts are having an unbelievable season Like there's almost nearly like three tiers in Scotland this year obviously you Celtic Rangers a long way ahead of the rest Hearts closest to them I think 20 points behind in third but they have a massive gap then to the rest of the league where there's not really much between fourth and uh, ninth or tenth but like it's a, I know they're traditionally a big club and they should have never been down in the Scottish Championship but for their first season back up, like to be really, really holding their own and looking absolute certainties for European football in the Cup semi-final against their fellow Edinburgh rivals, they will fancy their chances of getting to Hamden Park and that would really cap off what would be a memorable uh, first season back up for them in the top flight of Scottish football. And Aaron, not possibly been the season he kind of would have wanted for, but like at the same time, he has still got a nice bit of game time and it will kind of stand to him. Like it's his first time playing at that level, so can take... A little bit of getting used to. Uh, Johnny Hayes started for Aberdeen as they picked up a much-needed win, 3-1 uh, at home to Hibs. I think that's also the first time they've won since Jim Goodwin has taken over, so he kind of needed that win. I know, again, if you look at the table, they're not far above that relegation uh, playoff spot, but like literally, if they can get another win or two, they're then talking about a top-six finish. It's very congested down there. Like So I think I don't think they'll be relegated. I think they'll be okay anyway, Aberdeen. 
Uh, Ian Lawler was back between the sticks for Dundee. He had missed the last three matches uh, in goals then. Um, but himself and Ryan Sweeney suffered late heartbreak as they conceded a late goal to lose 2 1 at home to Rangers. I think a lot of Celtic fans were going to be hoping that they would have held out and it would have given Celtic, I think, a five point gap over Rangers uh, heading into the end of the season. And finally, then just one bit of news from the Scottish Championship, unless you have anything else to add, then afterwards, uh, Paul, uh, Daniel O'Reilly got an assist as Hamilton trashed St. Mar- or Port Partick Thistle 4 0 away. Uh, that's all my roundup from Scotland. Do you have anything else to add? Uh, just bring in my shells, boys. Again, Jay's caveat. He grabbed a goal and an assist in Falkirk's 2 0 win over Dumbarton. He's actually done quite well and he's played a lot since he's gone on loan there. So that's good to see because he is a talented boy as well. So fair play to him on that. Um, I can run through the two best leagues we have to talk about in this uh, in this show for us the the MLS and the A League. If you want, I don't mind. Or either. Do, do you have do you have Europe? Oh, Europe! I forgot Europe. Sorry, I had yeah, them before. You can, Europe, do, you can yeah. do Europe, and then I'll I'll finish off and save the best for last. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I I only have in Europe during the week because I I don't think Graham Carey played for CSK Sofia, but uh, Josh Cullen's Anderlecht were beaten one 0 by Ghent in a. A run uh, in, uh, sorry, what will I say? Uh, the fixture before the cup final, I think it's like, like who they, the two teams are going to be in the cup final. So uh, Ghent won that 1-0, so not good stuff. Not a good omen for Anderlecht yet, but I mean, they'll be chomping at the bit maybe to uh, beat them in the cup final now as well. And Ghent, who are one of the better teams in Belgium as well, they'd be disappointed to lose their Anderlecht. But look, Josh, full 90 minutes again, and same thing probably coming on Saturday. And probably a decent bit of time on Tuesday as well. Yeah, it should be interesting because he'd probably be coming up against maybe some players that he would know from playing week in, week out. I imagine there'd be a couple of players that don't know the ins and outs of the Belgian squad, but I'd imagine given the fact that they have a couple of the big names like Lukaku and De Bruyne not involved, there could be a couple of local boys involved with them there. Like So it'd be interesting. To find I suppose he'll always kind of want to kind of like maybe get get one over them a little bit, a little bit more motivation because that's where he's going to be going back after his international break. Uh, so then just to finish up uh, with the rest of the world, so first to the MLS, where there was a small bit of Irish involvement over the last week. Uh, Jake Mulroney came on at halftime as Atlanta United came down, came back from 3-1 down to draw 3-3 at home at Montreal. Uh, he didn't have any uh, impact on their two late goals as snatch to draw, but good fighting spirit all the same from the home side. And John Gallagher came off the bench for the last nine minutes of Austin SC's 1-1 draw with Seattle Sounders. And one man who was with Seattle Sounders last season, but he's now transferred to Toronto for the new season, Shane O'Neill. I know we had this debate last year. Is he Irish? Mm-hmm. Is he not? His dad's from Cork. He won an Ireland Iron medal with Cork. He's Irish in my eyes. We had him on the show last year, so we're going to keep him again this year. Uh, he played every second for his new club, Toronto, as they bet DC United uh, 2-1 at home. And then finally, from the A-League, uh, mixed fortunes for Jay O'Shea and Brisbane War over the past week. They played twice since we were last with you. Firstly, on Saturday morning, they trashed fellow bottom side Park Glory 4-1 away from home, in which he got a goal and assist. Just checking there, Andy Kyo is still on the books there with Park Glory. He's been in and out of the team um, this season. He wasn't involved in the match this squad. And then just this morning, uh, Brisbane Roar uh, took the lead against league leaders Melbourne City, thanks to an assist from Jay O'Shea. But unfortunately, uh, that was as good as it got as they went on to lose the game 2-1. But no disgrace to lose. 2-1 against the league leaders. As I mentioned, like Brisbane Ward, they're 11th. They're four points now above the bottom side Perk Glory after the win. Just looking at it, like the top six still make the end, the end of season playoffs again, similar to an MRS kind of style here. I'm not really feeding into your liking for franchise leagues. But I think they're only five or six points off that and they're not even halfway through the season yet. Like Or not, sorry, well, they would be because it was, um, it was a bit later starting. It was November time before it started. So they are kind of probably heading towards the end. So if they could possibly put a run form together, which they haven't done all season, they could still somehow be in with a chance to win the league, which would seem bizarre. I can, Even as I'm calling this out now, I could just see why you don't like these type of leagues. All right. Yeah, it's it's just like it's you finish first, but you don't win it and you have to go to a playoff, which just baffles me really. But look, that's the way they do it. And if it works for them, it works for them. But it wouldn't work in Europe anyway. Well, definitely. Well, no, it wouldn't work in the major leagues in Europe and it wouldn't work in Ireland either. I don't think people would be too pleased about it. But uh, look, it works. And we have Irish lads playing over there. And fair play to Jay O'Shea, actually. He's had a very good season and a very good last few weeks as well. He's been flying. And I think they rely on him a lot as well, as you can see. And uh, he's 
I mean, they look they looked like they were going to be rooted to the bottom at the start of the season anyway from what we were looking at. But uh, they've dragged themselves out of it and they're playing well and getting some results as well. And Andy Kill, there's a name I have not heard in a long, long time. My God, he's I remember there. Yeah. And he's he's over there a long, long time now at this stage. Mm-hmm. I know um, you're kind of keen enough because you'd head off for football soon enough. But just quickly, just before I go, I know there'll be a lot more content on the channel about over the next couple of days. But... The, the upcoming friendly games, um, I presume like myself, you're heading to both games. Obviously, yeah. Belgium's the kind of game we're kind of like, this is going to be a bit of a tester for us. The Lithuania match is kind of like, even though it's only friendlies, but we still kind of feel for the development of the team and to kick on for the motivation and progression made towards the end of the last campaign, towards the end of last year. That's a game we should be winning. They are seen as a team below us. I think Northern Ireland battled them 4-1 away back in September. But I think overall, in general, even though they're friendlies and it's hard to get overly excited it's just nice finally for the first time to head an inter- international camp we're not talking about Stephen Kenny needs this that and the other to prove that was wrong to get that contract to prove he's good enough for the job there's none of that talk it's just nice and refreshing and relaxing and I kind of feel like even if we don't come away with good results or good performances from this window while okay, it's not going to look good but I don't think there's going to be nice out from again like yeah no I agree I mean listen it's two free hits, really, you know, and uh, it's it's given new lads opportunities as well. New lads who've done very well this season. Um, I mean, listen, I'm just looking forward to going as well. The weather's nice as well this week. Yeah, hopefully, it cracking. sticks around. Yeah. yeah, hopefully it sticks around for the two games as well, particularly the Saturday one with a five o'clock kickoff. It'll be lovely, and even you'll be coming out of the ground, and it'll still be bright as well. And going into the ground on Tuesday, it'll still be bright with the clocks going. Is it back or forward? Forward, forward. forward yeah. yeah, yeah. So like. It's great. And I mean, it's good to see the tickets are going well as well. I mean, the Belgium game is probably going to be sold out or near enough to it. And 33,000 tickets sold for the Lithuania game. I mean, that's unbelievable. You think of this before COVID, you wouldn't have had 20,000 at that. So, I mean, it's just, that's great. And it's great to see, great to see kids coming out to watch them as well. And uh, look, I'm looking forward to it anyway. I always look look forward to going. And uh, good to see the supporters club again as well. And they have their gigs back going too, so. That's that's the best part of it, to be honest. Like, but uh, yeah. look, I'm looking forward to it anyway. It'll be great, and hopefully, a couple of the lads who we've spoken about for the last six or seven months get an opportunity like they deserve. Yeah, I think they've got the kickoff time absolutely smack bang right. Five o'clock on a Saturday gives you enough time for us fans, as you say, to have them kind of couple of points. The sun will still be shining and everything else like that. Like the weather's promised good. It'll nearly feel like a summer's day there, and then, like you said, be over by seven o'clock. Like if, you're, if you're coming up from the country for, from it from the day, you have plenty of time to get home. You're not getting home at city o'clock, and if you want to stay out the night, which is absolutely kind of perfect. Like, so no, I'm I'm very much looking forward to. It, even though it's hard as, as much as it kind of can be hard to get up to friendlies, I think there kind of is a little bit more of a buy and feel good factor. And like I said, people are still appreciating being able to go to these events, go to these games, mix and socialise, and all there might be concerns about you know second waves and everything else like that. Look. That's for another day. But uh, yeah, hopefully hopefully there'll be plenty of good pauses and talking points to take away from it. But uh, I think that's that's pretty much it. I know you've to head off to football there. I can see the under armour underneath you. So you're, <laughs> you're 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 like that meme where you have to do a podcast at five and go training at six with Paul yeah. Tiernan. Yeah, it's just it's just when I'm getting my lift, I don't want I, I don't want to be changed because it takes me ages to get the gear on because I have like ankle supports and certain socks and stuff so like it's just it's just all over the place so I just I just change when I come home from work Stephen Gerrard wouldn't be impressed with you know ah he's got 16 bolts in his hip he's a pussy as well anyway um, we'll leave it there folks anyway calling Stephen Gerrard a pussy thanks very much for everyone watching and uh, thanks to Jaren I might see you for a point maybe up around the Aviva absolutely oh, yeah brilliant stuff talk to you then Jaren good luck alright cheers Paul take care and thanks everyone who was watching